Questioning is hands down one of my favorite strategies, definitely something that helped me get through college. Uh, I don't think I could have done it with, without this strategy. Now there's a lot of ways you can do questioning. Um, we're just going to focus on the before questioning. And in this case, it's really just a matter of taking the headings from the chapter that you're reading, turning them into good questions, and then as you read, looking for the answers to your questions. Of course, it doesn't do you any good to just ask a bunch of questions without trying to find the answers. So before you read, you ask the questions and as you're reading, you're looking for those answers. This is a good way to stay focused and to stay engaged in what you're reading. But more than that, if, you're, if you work hard, you'll get better at, at asking these questions, turning the headings into questions. But if you think about where did this textbook come from? What class is it? What are the kind of things that are important in that class? That will guide you to uh, asking better, uh, good questions, questions that are really relevant to the context of the class. And that will help you focus on the main ideas of the different sections of the chapter. Uh, so for example, I'm looking at a communications book here, and I see that one of the headings is characteristics of competent communication. So what's a question we could turn that into? Probably something like, what are the characteristics of competent communication? And that's probably what they're going to tell us about in that section. Now, of course, we're going to have to do a little bit more when we're reading, because I bet you it's also going to tell us why those characteristics are important for competent communication. Not just what they are, but what makes them part of a competent communication. So I think that there's probably a couple good questions we could ask there. What are the characteristics of competent communication, and why are they important? You might even say, I don't know what they mean by competent communication. So that could be one of our questions. What is competent communication? Point is that we want to press ourselves to ask questions. They, they want to be good questions. You can't just ask a question like, how do you spell competent? You know, uh, So we want to ask questions that are really relevant. But it's better if you can to ask as many questions as you can think of. Most times, you're probably going to be able to get away with just asking one or maybe two questions. But the more questions you can ask, the more thorough it's going to be uh, when you go to read and try to answer those questions. So in general, turning uh, headings into questions is not very difficult. Take a look at that heading and just think about the question words. Who, what, when, where, why, and how. And which of those seems to be most important? So in characteristics of competent communication, what are they? You could ask who needs to know about them. But that's probably going to be anybody who communicates. I suppose you could ask, where is it important that I know about competent communication? But that's probably not what they're going to talk about there. How would be a good one though, right? How can I communicate more competently? Um, why is communication competence important? Why are these characteristics useful or helpful in establishing uh, communication competence? What did I miss? When? When should I be competently communicating? Probably not. So this is more of what it sounds to me like from this section, what, what is competent communication? What are the characteristics of competent communication? Um, how can I be a better communicator? Those are the kind of questions we're probably going to ask. Now, if it was a history book, the who's and the when's are probably gonna be really important questions. So you just kind of have to get a feel for it. You have to get a feel for the text you're reading, the class that it's part of, and uh, what's important there. And that will guide you to asking better questions. And if it turns out at the beginning or even at the end, you know, that your questions just aren't doing it, that you're, you're asking questions, but the author is just not addressing them, that's okay. Just keep working at it. You'll look at the kind of information the author does give and think, what question does this answer? Okay, and that'll help you get better at practicing um, questioning as a pre-reading strategy. Of course, questioning is kind of a curiosity strategy, right? So there's there's aspects of it that you can um, use to your advantage during and after reading. So while you're reading, maybe you come across something that's really confusing, and your question is, what the hell did I just read? Or, you know, what does this mean? Um, or it might be that the author starts talking about stuff that brings other questions to mind. You say, well, gee, I hadn't thought about that. How does that apply in this other context? You know, write them right down. Write them down right there in the book or in your notes or whatever it is. That's how you can use questioning during. Um, after, well, is there, are there still questions? Are there things that the author said that they didn't fully address that you still want to know more about? That's a way of questioning after. And of course, 
making up your own test questions, you know, creating a little quiz for yourself that you can use to practice from is a great way to use questioning as an after reading strategy that really prepares you for an exam.